How cool is it that here I am on Facebook Live with one of my new best friends, Jonathan Robinson. Is it okay that I just called you one of my new best friends? Absolutely. I, I just really um, was introduced to Jonathan's work just, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago um, when I learned that you were a presenter at the teachers that, you know, in, in the Evolve and the presenter series, and I got to play host for your interview with Bill. And then, and then I sat and I relaxed while you started teaching on Monday. And it just feels really, really good to be in your presence. Well, thank you. I, uh, I've been around a lot of teachers who helped me a lot. And, um, and I think eventually if you hang out with good people, it bears fruit. And, um, and the reason we're here now, and hi everyone, um, you know, I forgot. This is what I, Jonathan, I typically come on this Facebook page fairly regularly. And before I, usually before I teach or I talk or I do anything else, I ask people to come into presence with me. And I wonder, I know this is just, that's, that's your expertise, right? helping yeah. people get into awareness in just a minute or two. Would you mind, you know, um, taking us all through that? And, and before you do that, I also, if you're here and you're listening to us now, go ahead and hit the share button. Because I don't think Jonathan shows up too often in the Course in Miracles communities, but once you spend a few minutes with him, you're gonna wanna know more and you're gonna wanna tell your friends about him and you're gonna want to register for the awareness conference next weekend so that you could spend a whole bunch more time. So I just wanted to say all of that, but would you mind mm -hmm. bringing us all here and now? Sure, sure. And I'll just take a minute. One way of doing it, of course you wanna just feel your body on your chair, wherever you are, sensing our body, and how it feels to be seated, feeling gravity is a good way to begin. But something I like to do on top of that is, I call it the just born identity. You know, imagine you just got here because every moment is new. So I'm looking at uh, this beautiful being Cindy uh, and it's like, I don't know what's gonna happen next. I'm just here. I just am letting go of the story. We all have a story going on and you just let it go. And what is it like to just be in now? Separate from your story, you just got here. You're looking probably at a computer screen. What's it like to be in this room in this moment, separate from a story in your body with feelings and thoughts going by your head, hoping that this guy says something unique, something worthwhile, probably being a little distracted with all the thoughts and things going on, but your awareness gets to watch all that stuff floating through your head and you're just deciding to take a few minutes now to let it all go and be as present as you can. Maybe taking a deep breath and letting all that with a sigh. And if your eyes were closed, you just open your eyes and you see a world of colors and forms. And, and there's a body in front of you, your body, that can do all this great stuff. And you're opening your mind to perhaps learning some idea or technique that can be a friend for the rest of your life. That's a little way of being present. It feels phenomenal. It's just right now I just feel really happy and a little a little high. <laughs> I specialize in helping people get high without drugs. I, I enjoy that. And it was actually, I have a, a neighbor that walked out of our apartment complex this afternoon with a joint in his hand. And he said, 
it's illegal now. I could hold five pounds in my apartment if I want. And I'm laughing, I'm looking at them. I guess the only reason that really affects my life is because I guess if I chose to worry, I guess I don't have to worry about my daughter getting in trouble anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think all of us really want to get high. And of course, drugs can do that, but they can have problems. What What's nice is that if you can know yourself as as awareness or as spirit, and you can relax or melt into that, uh, then you can be high a lot. And, and wherever you go, uh, you're bringing your source of highness right with you. If I'm happy, regardless of what's going on around me, then I'm free, right? Yeah. Isn't that, yeah. And that's... And it doesn't really require that much. We don't, you know, in the, in the thing I'll be presenting, I'm going to talk about three or four methods that I gained from a lot of spiritual teachers I've talked to. I, I had the good fortune of, of interviewing the Dalai Lama and Marion Williamson and Deepak Chopra and Aja Shanti and Byron Katie and over a hundred of these people. I'm always asking what is the quickest, best way to tap into peace? And think of it that the technology has really increased. You know, I've been doing this for a while and 30 years ago, I could talk to a group of people and maybe three or four people would, would get blissed out in a little bit. Now when I do it, almost everybody does because the methods are better. I think the vibration is better. And really all you have to do is let go of your story and let go of your identification with being a small individual self and instead just open up to this, this spiritual experience, which is really what we are. It's really pretty. I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to remember we're doing an interview because I just really feel very, very good. Uh -huh. But, uh, and I just realized that when you and Bill had your conversation last month, you were on, you were live on this Facebook page. Okay. So anyone that wants your whole bio and the intro and really, you know, to sit here for anyone who, um, it's really kind of, oh, I should learn from this person because he was on Oprah three times, if that matters, right? You did that whole route. Yeah. You know, yeah. what was it like to be on Oprah three times, you know? Well, I'll, I'll share a story about Oprah. Uh, you know, the first time I was on her show, uh, you know, I wasn't the star, but the second time um, she came up to me and she said, uh, I really uh, appreciate the, your story about your dog. Oh, oh, no, the first time I was on, I shared a story about my dog that she read in, in my book. And she said, um, how's your dog doing? And I said, well, he's not doing so well. He's having seizures. And she said, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to pray for him. Well, I'm on two years later and she comes up to me and she says, uh, so how's Rama, the name of my dog? She remembered the name. And I said, he's doing better, you know? How'd you remember that? And she said, well, you know, caring for people is what got me to where I'm at. You know, she said, growing up, I didn't even have a house with a bathroom in it. But if you open your heart and you really care about people, it's amazing what grace can do. And, you know, I had a difficult childhood, but I have really tried to focus on how do we do the things that are important? How do we find peace? How do we open our hearts? And how do we do it in a crazy culture like what we have? And there are very simple methods for doing that. Like just, you know, for one minute, can you let go of whatever story you got going? We all have a poor me story going. Or for one minute, can you sense your body? Or for one minute, can you um, relax into a sense of love that you felt for a child or a pet. You know, I, I have dozens of these methods and the key is that different things work for different people, but once you find even just one thing that works for you, you then have a friend for life. 
And most people have, you know, they separate themselves to get into peace. They, they go on a vacation or they meditate for an hour and that's good. But when you can start to have blissful moments throughout your day and you feel this love that comes from our creator or whatever you want to call that uh, flow through you, then, then it really feels like you're entering into a new world. I'm still there. I'm like, I'm floating, I'm hanging, and and uh, I'm listening to you. And I do remember being in a beautiful vacation. I think I was in Dominican Republic. And I was sitting on the beach and I was with somebody who was absolutely miserable. And I'll never forget that. Uh, watching him living in hell in one of the most beautiful places on, on earth. I mean, and and I realized we do, we take our peace, we take heaven or hell with us wherever we go, don't we? Yeah, I have a quick story about that. Um, I was in uh, Thailand, they have a bunch of monks, you know, that beg for food. And this arrogant American came up to a monk and said in a voice really accustomed to instant obedience. So if you're so wise monk, why don't you teach me a lesson about heaven and hell? And the monk looks up at this guy and says, teach you? I couldn't teach you anything. You're ugly. You're disgusting. You smell bad. You probably don't have a caring bone in your entire body. Just get out of my sight and stop wasting my time. Well, this man gets red in the face. He's not used to being treated this way. He, he clenches his fist and he gets ready to punch the monk. And the monk says, that's hell. And the man realizes that this monk risked getting beaten up to teach him this lesson about hell. And he unclenches his fist and then he bows to the monk and the monk says, and that's heaven. And what I like about that story is that we're always creating our own heaven or hell by how we interpret the events in our life. And if you can rest back into your true nature or if you can interpret things in a more expansive way, then you can create moments of heaven. And if you interpret things or you don't know how to access that heaven within, you can create hell. So, you know, this year everybody's been through a pandemic and half my friends created hell and half of them created heaven. And I was always interested for the my friends that were doing great, like, so how'd you do that? And uh, usually I get the same answer, like, oh, this was an opportunity to go within and meditate more and tap into the divine. And, and, you know, we need practice doing that and we need good methods for doing that. And that's what uh, I think is going to evolve our world. Yeah, we, um, as soon as the pandemic started at the Teachers of God Foundation, we just went to work. We started doing you know, free virtual meetings and get togethers and really, yeah. you know, um, Bill's worked very hard in perfecting these, uh, these summits and bringing people together. So um, we just show up, right? You know, what, yeah. how can I serve today? In what way can I make the world even just a little bit better? Yeah, today? you know, it's funny, I, um, for years, I've been volunteering in prisons, teaching meditation. And when, I, when people find out about that, they go, really, why do you do that? I go, because I'm incredibly selfish. <laughs> and they say, what do you mean? I say, well, it's really so much fun to help people. And the other thing is I get to get out of prison every week. You know, which is a high, but you know, service, if when you give your gift out into the world, whatever your gift is, that is a way into joy. And, um, you know, we've been taught that more money or more control leads to joy or happiness. And, you know, we've tried that pretty well. Uh, and you see, I mean, whatever your politics, I thought Trump was interesting in that here was somebody who was a billionaire and the most powerful person on earth. And whether you liked him or not, he was always miserable. He was not, you know, a happy guy. 
so that's a, a role model saying that more money, power, etc., isn't the path. The path, the heaven is within. Absolutely, absolutely. So, is there a sneak peek or anything you can tell us about your presentation next week? Yeah, you know, um, I'll have like an hour and fifteen minutes or something. Which, what I like to do is give people three or four methods with experiential guidance so that they really take it for a test spin. And they see, oh, that method didn't work for me at all. Okay, good, you eliminate that one. And then the next method, wow, that was incredible. But you know, different things work for different people. And if you try a bunch of stuff, uh, you're gonna find something that works for you. And I really like methods that can be done in under two minutes. A lot of the methods I know take actually under 20 seconds. Like for example, here's, here's, a, here's a 20 second method. Allow everything to be exactly as it is just for right now. You can kind of relax. We're always kind of fighting reality in some way. You know, or fighting ourselves, but just allow, if, if you're criticizing someone, allow yourself to criticize them as well as you are. And that kind of relaxes something in our body, just allowing things to be as they are. And, you know, or how about the idea, just for right now, pretend there's no future, that there's just now. Nothing you have to do in the future, because there isn't one. Just now, you know, a lot of pointers, but also a lot of methods. And being that I've been lucky enough to interview over, you know, I have this podcast, Awareness Explorers, where I interview spiritual leaders, and I'm always asking them the same question. What's the best method you know of for uh, tapping into peace in under two minutes? And... I collect these methods and then I give them out. Yeah, I've been to your site and I'm currently, uh, Hoppy and I are spending time together reading your book. I have one friend who, who grabbed your book, Con Conversation with Dog on Audible. She's listened to it four times in the last three oh. or four days. She's just fallen in love with Happy. <laughs> yeah, Happy's the name of the dog in the book. And you know, this is a method um, that, uh, you know, I learned so much about love from my dog, but, you know, I spend like two, three minutes each morning just petting my dog, telling her how much I love her, and she licks me, and we have a big love fest, you know, it's like uh, being with a, a divine being. Well, they do say dog, God, same letters, right? Exactly. Well, Jonathan, this has been Fabulous. I didn't even check Facebook. So I will afterwards, if you have any comments or thoughts or the link is in the description, love for you to register and and uh, and uh, be with Jonathan next week, along with, I think we have close to 30 different presenters. It's going to be so much fun. Be amazing. Yeah. Is there anyone you're looking forward to listening to in particular? Yeah, I know most of these teachers and I, I just like them all. Uh, uh, I think you have Locke Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I like Locke a lot, um, but you have a lot of great people. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fabulous. It's gonna be fabulous. Thank you. Any final words? Uh, final words. Uh, your job in life is not your job. Your job is to know peace and love because from there all good things happen. My job is to know peace and love. I will remember that while I go sort the laundry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you very much, Jonathan. And thank you to everyone who's listening. Please hit share and uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. And you know, I love you. Mm -hmm.